Hi there, this is Anmesh from Pix Imperfect. Hope you're doing awesome. So let's say you have this image and you want her skin tone to look like this. Can we do it? Well, of course, yes. And we're going to do it in this video. However, the question is, is there an easy way to do it? Well, recently I came across a plugin that uses machine learning to generate color palette of any given image. And here's the great part. It can also generate color palettes of a defined area. So if you define a custom area, it can generate color palette of that. And not only that, it can apply those color to anywhere you want. So that gives me an idea. What if I define the skin tone that I like and run the plugin on it and let the plugin create a color palette for me and apply that color palette to this image? And it should look like this. And this is actually the result. Isn't it amazing? Sounds like a plan. So without any further ado, let's get started. Back in the magical world of Photoshop and if you want to go ahead and download the sample photos and follow along, you already know what to do. Check the links in the description. First of all, we need the reference skin tone. So let's import that. So we're going to go to our finder or explorer. Let's drag it and drop it over the image. Now keep in mind, this is just for reference, my friend. All right, let's keep it at the side. And maybe if you, you can crop it if you want to, because we don't want the image covering the entire thing, just a little bit of the skin. That's fine. With the help of the marquee tool right there at the top, just make a selection of the skin area, just like this, and click on the mask button. Right now you have this as a reference. Now step one is preparation for color match. Whenever you do any kind of color match, whether using the plugin or even doing it manually, we have to do some preparations. These preparations might include matching the brightness level or removing some color casts, so on and so forth. So here in this case, there's a lot of green that we need to remove first and also match the brightness as well. So first of all, let's create a check layer at the top so that it takes away all the colors and we can only see luminosity or brightness levels. So click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose solid color. Choose any color with zero hue and zero saturation. Hue doesn't matter when the saturation is zero. Hit OK and change the blend mode from normal to color. This takes away all the colors and gives you a visual representation of the brightness level. Now. Let's create a curves just above the background layer, just above the original image. So click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose curves. First of all, I want to take the highlights down. So with the help of the hand tool right there, you don't have to do any kind of intricate curves here. Just with the help of the hand, scrubby hand, just click and drag it down. That's it until it matches. But the dark areas seem too dark, right? So for the dark areas, we can create a point right here and then manually take it up just a little bit. There you go. Have a look, the face is matching so nicely. But if you look at the body, it's still so bright, right? So we need to create one more curves adjustment layer. So click on the adjustment layer icon one more time and then choose curves. This time, we want to keep the bright areas intact. So choose the scrubby hand right there and just click. We want to keep it intact, but we want to darken a little bit darker mid-tones. So click and drag it down. And this is just for the body. This seems to be about right to me. Now we only want to apply it to the bottom part of the image. So select the mask and choose the gradient tool. Choose a gradient from white to black and then just draw a gradient. That way, it'll only be applied on the bottom part of the image. Let's minimize it. This seems to be about right. So here's the before. Here's the after. Now the brightness levels are matching perfectly. Let's not forget, we have to remove the color casts as well, right? So let's turn off the check layer. This check layer was for luminosity. Let's turn it off or even delete it. We don't need it right now. So let's create one more curves adjustment layer just above the previous one. So click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose curves. And have a look, there's a lot of green, right? So let's go to the green channel. Click on the channel drop down inside of the curves and then choose green. Create a point and with the help of the arrow tool, slowly and gradually take it down. Have a look how much better it looks now. Already, it looks so much better than before. Okay, now with that, we finished the first step. Now I have a request. Please don't get too caught up in the first step. We can always change things later. We can always come back because these are adjustment layers. Don't get too caught up going into the green channel or RGB, trying to adjust this slowly and gradually, see what works for you. You can do that later, not now. Let's move on to step number two. Step number two is matching the color. And this is where we're going to use the plugin. So let's 
turn on the reference skin tone, select that layer, turn that on. Now we need to analyze this skin and create a color palette out of it. And for that, we're going to use a plugin called Color Map X. Let's go to Window, Extensions, and then NBP Color Map X. If you want to know more about the plugin or check it out, you can always go to pix.live slash color. Now I had created a palette before, let's ignore that. First of all, we need to select the skin and then start analyzing it by running the plugin. So which parts do you want to consider? Of course, let's choose the lasso tool right there and just make a rough selection of the skin. Make sure no odd areas are selected. Now let's just zoom in and just deselect the eyes because we don't want to consider the eyes or the eyebrows, right? So hold the Alt key or the Option key. The lasso tool turns into lasso minus and just subtract those areas. Same with the lips and of course the mouth and everything inside it, of course. So there you have it. Now only the skin is selected. Now once you have installed the panel, it's going to show up under Windows, Extensions and NBP Color Map X. So I have opened it. Now you need to decide how many samples you want. In other words, how many color samples of the skin you want. For this example, let's go for about six is fine. Let's click on Analyze. Now it has analyzed the skin tone and came up with this color palette of the skin. You can even create more or less number of samples if you want. So if I increase it to about eight and click on Analyze, eight colors are gonna show up right there. So six is fine for this example. Click on Analyze and you can save it as a preset as well by clicking on the three dots and clicking on Save as Preset. So we can save it as skin one, all right? If you don't wanna save it, you don't have to. Press Control or Command D to deselect. Once you have created the color palette, it's very easy to apply it. Now the great advantage of saving it as a preset is that you can also apply it to any other image in the future. You don't have to again and again open this reference image. All right, so let's zoom into our subject. All you have to do is to click on the three dots of the current palette if it has loaded that skin tone or the preset that you saved and then choose apply color grading. It is that simple. Now by default, it applies a contrasty wash of that skin tone. We don't want that. What we want is complete change of color. So change the blend mode from soft light to color. By default, it creates a gradient map of that palette and chooses the blend mode soft light and opacity at 50. We want the color blend mode opacity is fine. Let's bring it below the reference skin tone because we don't want to change the reference skin tone. Now we only want to apply it to the skin, nowhere else. So select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I. Now you know what to do, right? Take the brush, take a soft round brush, my friend. Zoom in and start painting with white on the skin. Just fill the skin area. That's it. Now we don't want it on the lips, right? So press X to toggle between the foreground and the background. Now the foreground color is black. Now let's paint on the lips to take it away from there. As you can see, we have masked the skin right now and it looks awesome. Now, if you want more or less color, you can always increase or decrease the opacity. So let's choose the CMX skin one. Skin one was our preset, remember? And then let's increase the opacity to 70%. We wanted just a little more color. All right, this looks nice. Now let's go ahead and also match the lips because why not? So let's zoom into the lips of the reference skin. Let's select that layer. Now let's open the Color Map X panel and this time we're going to select the lips or the areas where we want to sample from. So let's make a selection. Of course, we do not want the teeth. This seems to be nice. Let's subtract the teeth area. Now all you have to do is choose the number of samples that you want. For this one, let's not choose so many samples. Five is fine, four will be fine too. And let's click on Analyze. Okay, now we have the sample and let's save it as a preset as well. So click on this three dots, save as preset and choose lips one. 
Okay, so we have two presets, one for the lips, one for the skin, and we can use it for future projects. Press Ctrl or Command D to deselect that. Now let's apply it to these lips. How do we do that? First of all, let's select the layer beneath the reference skin tone because we don't want to apply it to the reference skin tone, of course, and click on the three dots next to lips preset and choose apply color grading. For this one, I think the multiply blend mode would suit the best. So for the dark areas, change the blend mode from soft light to multiply at the very top because multiply is a blend mode which darkens and increase the opacity to about 90 or 100. 90 is fine. We just want to apply it to the lips. So select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I, zoom in, take the brush, take a soft round brush, white as the foreground color and just paint on the lips. Now let's compare it with the original lips. If you look at the reference image, the lips are a little lighter, right? And we only want it to apply it in the dark areas. So double click on the right hand side of this layer and take it away from the bright areas of the underlying layer by taking the slider of the underlying layer from right to left. This takes it away from the bright areas. So this is fine. Hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the slider to break it apart to make the transition smoother. And there you have it. This looks pretty nice. Now we have covered the dark areas. What about the bright areas? So let's make a copy of these lips by pressing Ctrl or Command J. And what is the blend mode which brightens stuff? Screen, right? Change the blend mode from multiply to screen. Now we only want to apply screen in the bright areas. We do not want to brighten the dark areas, right? So again, double click on the right hand side of the layer. Let's make it normal and then take it away from the dark areas by taking the slider of the underlying layer from left to right. Just the opposite, my friend. See, now we are matching it with the original one. You don't have to perfectly match. It just should look beautiful on our subject. There you have it. Hit OK once you're satisfied and have a look. Look at the before and after. So this is the before and this is the after. Just look at the difference, my friend. So now we are done with step number two, which was matching the color. And the panel made it really simple to just generate and dig out the colors of the original skin. Now, in the end, we just have to do some finishing touches. As you can see, have a look at this skin. It has an overall yellowish tone in the mid-tones and the dark areas, which this one lacks a little bit and maybe a little bit of contrast. And this can be easily achieved with what? One of my favorite things, curves. So click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose curves again. And in here, let's make the bright areas a little bit brighter by choosing the hand right there and just click on a bright area, drag it up to make it brighter. Now let's add a little bit yellow. Now we don't have any yellow in here, but we have the opposite of yellow. And what is that? Blue. Keep in mind, RGB is the opposite of CMY. Red is the opposite of cyan, green is the opposite of magenta, and blue is the opposite of yellow. So let's go to blue. If we decrease the blue, yellows are gonna show up. So click on the hand again, and in the mid-tones, in these areas, we can click and create a point, and with the help of the arrow tools, slowly and gradually bring it down. To add a little more, add just a tint of yellow. Now maybe you wanna add some magenta to it, so let's go to the green channel and bring it down as well. Now we are getting so much closer. Let's take a look at the complete before and after. Let's turn off the reference skin tone. So this is the after and this my friend is the before. Drastic difference, isn't it? And this is optional. If you want, you can also add some color lookup adjustment to it as well. And one of the most frequent ones that I've used all the times, so maybe more than I should, is of course, crisp form. So click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose color lookup. And I'm going to go ahead and choose crisp warm directly. Of course, this is too much. So let's decrease the opacity to 20%. And boom, let's take a look at the before and after. So this is the before and this is the after. If that's not a massive difference, I don't know what it is. So do I recommend this plugin? Highly, no doubt about it. You can check it out at pix.live slash color or simply click the link in the description. For the quality of colors it pulls in, it is very, very reasonably priced. If you're into commercial retouching or color grading or even compositing, this is definitely a must have. It is not easy to create a panel that can make smart decisions. Instead of just simply averaging different brightness levels and coming up with a color palette, 
this does make smart decisions using machine learning and chooses only the most visually prominent colors. It is rare for a panel to do that. Now, some of you might ask, can we do it without the plugin? Of course, yes. And in fact, I have made a tutorial on how to do it. You can check it out right here. But do keep in mind, it's going to take you a lot more time, a lot more effort, and also a lot of guesswork and a hell lot of layers. So be prepared for it. This just makes your job so much easier. I hope I could show something new. I hope this video helped. And if it did, make sure to give us a like. And also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting this channel on Patreon and helping keep Pixel Perfect free for everybody forever. Thanks so much for all your support. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys again in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.